All right, hey, John Morris here with johnmorrisonline.com. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to dynamically populate an HTML select box using data from a database or a dropdown box, you might be calling it. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. It's pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and set this up just a little bit. So let's head over to our database and you can see that we have a database called demo. Inside of it, we have a table called table and inside that table we have a couple different rows so we have our fields field one field two three four in that we have some just generic data that we have here and I'm going to show you how you can use PHP to pull this data from the database and dynamically populate a drop-down box so you can see here I've got this array set up that I've, I've created the database I'm going to show you all the code for this but you can see what we're getting from our database here and then I'm using that to populate this drop-down box here and if we go in and we look at this then we can see that we have our select box and our value is actually the ID of that particular result for one and then for two and then we're grabbing the field one value and we're using that as the name or the label that's used in the drop-down box. So this is a fairly common thing that you might do. You might have, for example, in WordPress, they have their roles that they have for the different roles in a WordPress blog. And those are, of course, stored somewhere uh, pop in the database. And then they can pull that array and they can use that to populate when you select what role you want a user to have and then of course plugins can add to the roles that are available and so on so that's one example there's lots of reasons why you may want to do this um, I, I do it quite a bit with like WordPress plugins and stuff so anyway how do you do it alright so let's go ahead and head over to our code here and you can see I got a couple things going on one I have a config file that has all my database details in it and I'm going to show you that because I don't really want to reveal those details but essentially it's just define statements that create these constants right here and set the values for them so we're gonna require that config file so we have access to those constants and then we're going to create a new instance of the my sequel I which is kind of the new way of using my sequel the recommended way so we're gonna create and instantiate a new um, instance of that and essentially connect to our database. What's nice about this is it allows us to actually connect and select the database all in one. So you can see we have our host which is localhost, we have our user which is the user that has access to the database, the password for that user and then of course the database name. Again all those are set in this config file. So that's regular connecting your database type stuff and then if the connection something goes wrong with the connection we have an if statement here that will kill the script and return an error if there's something wrong with the connection then we kind of get into what we're doing here we query our database we're just selecting all of the results from our table which is named table so we're just selecting all the results from that table and then as you know you have to loop through the those results and get created create an array of objects is essentially what we're creating here so this little this part right here this while statement is what's ultimately creating this array of these different objects okay so that again this is all pretty standard stuff there's this is this is stuff anytime you connect to a database and you select data from it you're gonna have to do this stuff we do an array pop to take off there's always a blank result when you do this while statement Here, I'll, I'll just show you so if we comment this out and we come back over you can see we have this extra element here that's blank so you just do an array pop and get rid of that so that's what that is and then here we're just printing it out now you might be wondering what print our HTML is it's actually just a custom function I wrote that makes it so that this array prints out a little more legibly like this so that uh, is something I mean you don't really need to worry too much about but I made it easier for this demo so again this all up here is regular database stuff so now we have an array of objects okay just like anytime you query the database 
this is ultimately what you're gonna end up with. So what we wanna do now is take this data and use it to dynamically populate a drop-down box. So it's really pretty simple. First you can see we have our H3 here so we can kind of delineate where we start. And then we have our select tag here. So we just do like we normally would with any select tag. We give it a name called the name. And then we create a for each loop. And in that for each loop, then we're gonna loop through our array of objects here. And we're going to for each element in that array or each object, we're going to create a new option. So in this select statement. So that's what this for each loop does. Is it's just going to loop through that and then for each element in the array it's going to create a new option and we're going to set the value to the ID, the option ID of that particular element and then we're going to set the what appears in the actual box, the label, we're going to set that to field one and then we're going to close the option we close the for each loop and that's it so it, it's really pretty simple and then PHP is simply going to loop through this array and for each one of these objects it's going to set create an option and the option value is going to be set to the ID and the label is going to be set to field one and so you can see down here we have field one and we have label which are the field ones for each one of these objects and again if we take a look at it you can see that the value is then set to the ID and so that that's pretty much all there is to it in terms of getting this to happen and then of course we just uh, free up the result set and close our connection so it's really pretty straightforward in terms of creating this drop-down box now you could do this for lots of different things um, beyond, beyond just uh, you know a drop-down box or whatever but uh, it's pretty straightforward code pretty simple to do it's just a matter of getting this array and then once you have that array, you can loop through it and create an option for each element in that array. So that's it. That's all there is to it. Hopefully you found that helpful. I'll talk to you again soon.